good morning learners and glarmina academy counselor igno ask question 14000 so we are dealing with the course npc 004 advanced social psychology so in the last session we have finished unit 4 of the first book study material so next you can start with unit 5 uh, or unit 1 of the second booklet so it is the concept of social influence so let's start with the definitions so social influence it is a change in an individual's thoughts feelings attitudes or behaviors that results from interaction with another individual or group so how our thoughts feelings attitudes and behaviors can be changed can be genuinely changed through the interaction with another individual or group So it refers to the change in behavior that one person causes in another intentionally or unintentionally. So the change the person perceives himself in relation, in relation to the influencer, the other people and the society in general. It is also defined as the efforts of one or more individuals to change the attitudes, beliefs, perceptions or behaviors of one or more others. Social influence can also be defined as the process by which individuals make real change. That is an important point. It makes real changes to the feelings and behaviors of individuals as a result of the interaction with others who are perceived to be similar, desirable or expert. Next comes various current researches on social influence. This question was asked in the last question paper of MPC 004. So let's see what are the current researches on social influence. It was done into five main areas. The first one was minority influence in group settings. So how a minority can influence a majority? Like for example, how teachers can influence students? How politicians or religious leaders influence their followers? Etc. So how a minority subgroups attempts to change the majority so and it depends on the consistency of the minority group viewpoints the presence of larger groups often leads to more creative thinking and solution by minority group the next area is on persuasion Persuasion can be defined as the change in attitudes or beliefs based on the information we receive from others. It focuses on the written or spoken messages sent from the source to recipient. So there are two types of theories that dominate persuasion research. First one is elaboration likelihood model. And the second one is heuristic systemic model. In elaboration likelihood model, we say is that the amount of amount and nature of thinking that a person does about a message that will affect the kind of persuasion that the message produces. So how much effort we we give about that message. So it matters a lot. And also, 
it says the research says that the source message the recipient the affect the channel and the context affects the kind of persuasion okay now comes the heuristic systemic models it proposes that the argument strength will be most effective in persuading an individual when he is motivated and able to attend to the message so there are basically two routes systemic route and heuristic route the persuasion that takes place through systemic route will be relatively permanent and enduring and the persuasion through heuristic route is more likely to be temporary so if we are motivated then the route will be systemic one and if you are not motivated the route will be heuristic one then comes social impact theory so social impact theory means any of the number of changes that might occur in an individual due to the presence or actions of others who are real imagined or implied so the changes can be physiological cognitive emotional or behavioral one and it says that the impact of any information is a function of three major factors first one how many numbers are there who make up that source the number of others who make up that source next one is immediacy it means the closeness or the strength and the sec- third one is salience or power of that information so next is social influence network theory here it says that the for uh, it says that the theory involves a two weighted averaging of influential opinions first the actor will have their own initial opinion of some matter and when he join in a group at each stage the actor forms a norm opinion which is a weighted average of other opinions in the group then the actor modifies their his own opinion in response to this norm forming a new opinion which is a weighted average of their initial opinion and the network norm so according to group norms we are changing slowly or we are modifying our initial opinions next comes expectation states theory here according to this theory group members develop expectations about the future task performance of all the members in the group including themselves so once is developed these expectations are guiding a group interactions so this expectations both guide and are maintained by the interaction so these those group members for whom the highest expectations are held will be the most influential in the group's interactions or he can be the leader of that group so these were the current researches in social influence area next comes the three different areas of social influence these are the three different areas in which we can change intentionally or unintentionally the attitude feelings thoughts and behaviors of another individual so these are the three forms or three areas of social influence first one is conformity second one is compliance and third one is obedience so let's start with the compliance first i'm uh, sorry conformity first 
So conformity it is the type of social influence in which individuals change their attitudes or behaviors in order to adhere or to stick to the existing social norms. So conformity it is changing how you behave to be more like others. So we need we seek approval and friendship of others. So here we are adhering to social norms. So people often confirm from a desire to achieve a sense of security within the group. Typically a group that is of a similar age, culture, religion or educational status. Okay. Can be seen among peers usually. Then conformity influence the formation and maintenance of social norms and allows the society to function smoothly and predictably. Because conformity is a group phenomenon, such factors as group size, unanimity, cohesion, status, prior commitment and public opinion all help to determine the level of conformity an individual will display. Let's see with an example. It was a study, it was a classic study done by Solomon E. Ash in 1951. Actually, he gave groups of seven or nine college students what appears to be a test of perceptual judgment. He told it was a test for perceptual judgment matching the line of a length of a line segment to comparison lines so he draw a standard line and corresponding to that he draw he drew three comparison lines each subject saw a pair of cards set up in front of the room similar to the ones that follow in a group of nine eight actually eight subjects were his confederates and the result was that although people could pick up the right correct line 99% of the time when making the judgments by themselves, they went along with the erroneous group judgment and 75% of time, in 75% of time, even when it was plainly wrong. So, one of the three lines at the right is equal to the standard line at the left so the group uh, the original participant should decide which line is equal to the comparison line it was very evident the result i mean uh, the correct line was very evident but the eight subjects the eight subjects who were the real confederates of the experimenter responded incorrectly and the confirming subjects did not fool themselves into thinking the wrong line was equal to the standard line they could see the difference also they were influenced actually what was done what was happened was they were influenced by the eight people in a row making the wrong decision the confirming subjects were later asked why they had made such obviously incorrect judgments. The, the, the report was that the subjects told they must have been looking at line widths or I assumed it was an objective, optical illusion or if 8 out of 9 people made the same choice I must have missed something in the instructions. So, Ash obtained the conformity effect through this experiment. Now comes the various factors that found to increase conformity. The first one was attractiveness of other members in the group. The people tend to go along with a group of attractive people. Next comes confirm, com complexity or difficulty of the task. The people will confirm if the judgment is difficult for them. 
Next is group cohesiveness. Here the people confirm more if friendships or mutual dependencies were set up beforehand. Next comes types of norms. There are basically two types of norms, descriptive norms and injunctive norms. So descriptive norms are ones indicating what most people do in a given situation. Like we can witness somebody blow out the cigarette before entering into the bus. It is called as descriptive norms which we obey. Then injunctive norms specifically say what we ought to be done which is approved or disapproved behavior in a given situation. For example, if it is written as smoking is prohibited in public places and we are confirming with that instruction. Next factor is group size. Group size has an important effect on the tendency to confirm. That is the group size of the influencing group. We are like but there are chances that we are likely to confirm to opinion held by the group if the number of group members holding the same opinion is large. Okay. So these are the different factors that are found to increase confirmity. Now comes the varieties of confirmity. There are two main varieties of confirmity. Informational confirmity and normative confirmity. So otherwise called as informational social influence and normative social influence. So let's see what is informational social influence or informational confirmity. It occurs when one turns to be the member of one's group to obtain accurate information. So our desire is to be right in this situation. A person is most likely to use informational social influence in three situations. When a situation is ambiguous, people become uncertain about what to do. During a crisis, when Im immediate action is necessary, in spite of panic, looking to other people can help ease fears. But unfortunately, they are not always right. The more knowledgeable a person is, the more valuable they are as a resource. Thus, people often turn to experts for help. You can refer Musafir Sharif's autokinetic experiment to understand this concept. So, informational social influence can often result in internalization or private acceptance later. Then comes normative social influence. It is actually the desire to be liked by others. It occurs when one confirms to be liked or accepted by the members of the group. It can be seen among peers usually. So normative influence is a function of social impact theory which has three components. The number of people in the group has a surprising effect. As the number increases, the, each person has less of an impact. A group strength is how important the group is to a person. Groups we value generally have more social influence. Immediacy is how close the group is in time and space when the influence is taking place. These are the factors that affect normative social influence. The strength, the immediacy and the number of people. So when and there is one more situation when accuracy is not very important, it is better to get the wrong answer than to risk social disapproval. And there is a contradictory situation also. It is an experiment using procedures similar to ASH and it is found that there was significantly less confirmity in 6 person groups of friends as compared to 6 person groups of 
strangers because friends already know and accept each others there may be less normative pressure to confirm in social in some situations so field studies on cigarette and alcohol abuse however generally demonstrate evidence of friends exert a normative social influence on each other so there are exceptions in these kind of researches then comes minority influence and conformity although conformity generally leads individuals to think and act more like groups individuals are occasionally able to reverse this tendency and change the people around them this is known as minority influence so it is most likely when people are able to make a clear and consistent case for their point of view i told you the consistency of the minority group view point before then the minority members who are perceived as experts are high in status or have benefited the group in the past are almost likely to succeed another form of minority influence can sometimes overriding conformity effects and lead to unhealthy group dynamics also so by creating negative emotional climate that interferes with healthy group functioning next comes how gender and conformity is connected we know that females are more likely to conform than males women are more persuasive and more conforming than men in group pressure situations that involves surveillance in situations not involving surveillance women are less likely to confirm and females are more susceptible to social pressures than males but in situations like if there are both sexes men and women confirms more than the participants of same sex how people resist conformity what are the situations so if the desire to maintain our uniqueness and in or individuality is more there is less chance to conform and the desire to maintain control over the events or in their lives is also another factor most people want to believe that they can determine what happens to them and yielding to social pressure sometimes run counter to this desire so these three desires resist conformity to a greater extent next comes the second area of compliance that uh, area of social influence that is compliance so compliance it refers to the act of responding favorably to an explicit or implicit request offered by others it is not adhering to existing social norms but it is through explicit or implicit request we are changing our attitudes feelings thoughts and behaviors and the request may be explicit such as direct request for donations or implicit such as an advertisement promoting its products without directly asking for purchase next comes basic principles underlie many techniques professional use for gaining complaints so these are the coming in the coming slides we can see six basic principles for gaining complaints first one is friendship or liking we know that we are more willing to comply with the request from friends or from people we like than with requests from strangers or people we do not know before or we do not like next is commitment or consistency once we commit ourselves to a position or an action we are more willing to say or do things that fit the committed position in various ways we need to 
have consistency of our behavior next comes the principle of scarcity it is a tendency to value to feel worthy about and to secure opportunities that are scarce or decreasing day by day next comes the principle of reciprocity we are generally more willing to comply with a request from someone who has previously provided a favor or concession to us than to someone who has not so we are responding to a previous favor given by other person next is social validation it is a tendency to comply with a request for some action if this action is consistent with what we believe person similar to ourselves are doing or thinking we want to be correct and one way to do so is to act and think like other people next is credibility if the source is an expert with the knowledge abilities or skills that is more credible we would respect the request more and we would be more likely to comply in that situation next comes different tactics the professionals use for gaining compliance so let's see what are the tactics based on the first principle of friendship or like first one is ingratiation that is getting others to like us so that they will be more willing to agree to our request among this we can see two types of tactics self enhancing tactics and other enhancing tactics these things we can see in the area of impression management so self enhancing tactics it includes giving smiles high level of eye contact etc so we are improving one's appearance emitting positive non verbal cues and associating oneself with positive events or people the target pe- person already likes the other enhancement techniques include flattery agreeing with the target persons with their viewpoints showing interest in them and providing them with small gifts or favors next is the tactics based on the principles of confer commitment or consistency first one is foot in the door technique it is a procedure for gaining compliance in which the requester begin with a smaller request first and when this is granted we escalate to a larger one which was the actual target of the person so we can see people borrowing money from others first they will ask for a small amount if that thing is accepted they will ask for higher amount and the another technique is low ball procedure this involves offering an attractive deal to the customer first and after they accept we will change that offer in some way which may not be that much appealing for the client but they will accept it because of the consistency tactic i mean the consistency principle that exists among individuals next is bait and switch tactic it is a technique for gaining complaints in which once the customer enters the shop the items offered for the sale are showed as unavailable or presented of very low quality next comes the techniques based on reciprocity principle first one is door in the face last one was foot in the door so don't make it confused so door in the face here it is a procedure for gaining complaints in which the requester first first begin with the larger request and when this is refused retreat to a smaller request so it is just opposite to foot in the door technique 
we'll ask for higher amount and if it is not approved we'll ask for lower lesser amount next is foot in the mouth technique when people feel that they are in a relationship with another person no matter how trivial or unimportant they often feel that they are obliged to help or considerate to that person simply because the relationship exists next is that is not all technique an initial request is followed before the target person can make up his or her mind to say yes or no a small incentive is offered by the person who is using this tactic that sweetens the deal and the request will be accepted by the target person or the consumer next is next comes the tactics based on scarcity principle there are two tactics one playing hard to get this technique involves effort to increase the compliance by suggesting that a person or object is scarce rare and hard to obtain next is deadline technique this is a technique for increasing complaints in which the target person are told that they have only limited time to take the advantage of some offer or to obtain some item you can see these kind of techniques used in natural sales next comes other tactics for gaining complaints first one is complaining in the context of complaints expressing discontent dissatisfaction resentment or regret as a means of exerting social influence on others so complaining involves expression of discontent or dissatisfaction with oneself or some aspect of the external world and often such statements are simple expressions of personal states this can be seen among couples then comes putting others in good mood people's mood often exert a strong effort on their behavior and it seems this principle also holds with respect to complaints when individuals are in good mood they tend to be more willing to say yes to various requests than when they are in a neutral negative mood so we we'll put others in a good mood we we'll, we used to we use the term soapy for this <laughs> next the third area of social influence that is obedience so we covered first area that is conformity the second area was compliance and the third area is obedience so obedience is a form of social influence where an individual acts in response to a direct order from another individual who is usually an authority figure so the term which we should stress here is order we are responding to direct order from another individual who is an authority figure so obedience occurs when you are told to do something by the authority whereas the conformity happens through social pr- pressure and the obedience involves a hierarchy of power or status but we can see that obedience is less frequent than conformity or compliance nowadays because even persons who possess authority and power generally prefer to ex- exert it through the velvet glove through request rather than direct orders and from some forms of human obedience obedience to laws obedience to social norms obedience to a monarch government organization religion or church obedience to god 
obedience to self imposed constraints obedience to a spouse or child to a husband or wife or parent respectively obedience to management in the work place now cultural attitude to obedience obedience is regarded as a virtue in many traditional cultures historically children have been expected to be obedient to their elders slaves to their owners serfs to their lords in feudal society and the lords to their king and everyone to god an obedient training of human beings learning to obey adult rules is a major part of the socialization process that exists in our society in childhood and many techniques are used by adults to modify the behavior of child children now comes the experimental studies of human obedience there are three major studies or experiments first one was milgram experiment then stanford prison experiment and the la- la- latest one was hoffley hospital experiment first one milgram's experiment it was carried out in 1961 it was the earliest investigation of the power of authority figures as well as the lengths of lengths to which part the participants would go as a result of their influence the milgram's research shows that showed that the contradictory expectations a majority of civilian volunteers would obey orders to apply electric shock to another person until they were unconscious or dead the experiment proves that obedience is something humans teach one another and follow through with milgram thinks that the problem lies in the structure of society people are just following orders of superiors and are not directly responsible for his or her actions next comes the 1971 exper- uh, stanford prison experiment here the experiment studied the behavior of people in groups and in particular the willingness of people to obey orders and adopt abusive roles in a situation where they were placed in the position of being submissive or dominant by a higher authority in the experiment actually a group of volunteers were divided into two groups and placed in a prison with one group in the position of playing prison guards and the other group in the position of prisoners the prisoners from that state adopted a submissive role with regard to their tormentors even though they knew that they were in an experiment and that the captors were other volunteers with no actual authority other than that being role played in the experiment the experiment demonstrated not only obedience of the guards to the experimenters and the prisoners to both guards and experimenters but also high levels of compliance and conformity the last experiment was hoffling's hospital experiment it was done in 1966 by psychiatrist charles k hoffley he published the results of a field experiment on obedience in the nurse physician relationship in its natural hospital settings the nurses unaware that they were taking part in an experiment were ordered by unknown doctors to administer dangerous doses of a fictional drug to the patients although several hospital rules disallowed administering the drugs under the circumstances 21 out of the 22 nurses would have given the patient an overdose of medicine this all shows the kind of destructive obedience that exists in our society due to the earlier socialization process happened in childhood 
than factors that increase obedience. In Milgram's study, the commands were given by an authority figure rather than another volunteer. And the experiments were done in a prestigious institution. The authority figure were present in the group with the subject to give confidence for them. And the learner was in another group. And the subject did not see other subjects of disobeying the commands. Then the factors to carry out obedience to extremes. People always justify their behavior by assigning responsibility to other authority rather than themselves. They think that it is the authority who is responsible and not myself. People define the behavior that is expected of them as routine. People don't want to be rude or offend the authority. People obey easy commands first and then feel compelled, compelled to obey more and more difficult commands. This process is called entrapment and it illustrates the foot in the door phenomenon. Only when we can differentiate between being a good subject and having good morals will we be able to make a distinction between being obedient and committing crimes to our own individual actions. So here comes the end of the session. Thank you.